ta'ala Innal hamdulillah innahmuduhu wa nasta'in wa nasta'gfiru Wa nukminu bihi wa tawakkalu alaihi wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina Wa min siyyati a'malina May yahdihillahu fala mudillala Wa min yudlilhu fala hadiyala Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la Wa ashadu anna sayyidina wa nabiyina wa maulana muhammad abduhu wa rasulah amma ba'd Continuing from last week's khutbah in which we discussed the virtues of Surah Al-Ghaf, we very briefly mentioned and discussed the story of Musa alayhi salam that is mentioned in uh, Surah Al-Ghaf. And I said that this week we will elaborate on that story and go into some of the lessons that we can extract from that story. So just some background first before we go into the story. The story of Musa alayhi salam is the story that is told the most in the Qur'an. It appears most often in the Quran, followed only by the story of Adam alayhi salam. So these are the two stories you will find most in the Quran. First Musa alayhi salam and then Adam alayhi salam. Now most of the time, when the story of Musa alayhi salam is mentioned in the Quran, it's either talking about his dealings with the Pharaoh or his dealings with Bani Israel after the Pharaoh. But the story mentioned in Surah al kahf is unique. It is a story that deals with neither of these two. It deals with a, a, a unique third story that's not mentioned anywhere else in the Quran. So you will find the story of Musa alayhi salam, most of it is repeated multiple times in the Quran. But the segment found in Surah al kahf is not repeated. It's found only in Surah al kahf So this is a very unique part of his story. And this is a part of his story that many people are unaware of. So the story is mentioned very briefly in Surah al kahf but there is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari that elaborates upon it and gives us more details about the story. And the way that this uh, the, the, the hadith begins is that Musa alayhi salam was delivering a khutbah to his community and one of the Bani Israel asked him, is there anyone who has more knowledge than you? So Musa alayhi salam thinking about it, Thinking about the fact that he is the Nabi, he is the Rasul, he has Wahi, he speaks directly to the angel Jibrahil. So, therefore, he concluded that there is nobody with more knowledge than him. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent revelation informing Musa alayhi salam that there is an individual in a nearby land or in a far off land, in a distant land, who knows things that you don't know. Note, it doesn't say he knows more than you know. He says he knows what you don't see. So, Musa alayhi salam, when he hears about this individual who knows things he does not know, his first reaction is, I want to learn from him. And so he, gets on, uh, so he goes on a long journey and he travels with his apprentice, Yusha ibn Nun alayhi salam. So Yusha becomes the prophet of Bani Israel after the death of Musa alayhi salam. At this point in time, he is learning from Musa alayhi salam. He is following him around, he's like being like a servant to him, he's learning how to be like him because he's going to take over when Musa alayhi salam passes away. So the two of them go on this journey together, Musa and Yusha. And the two of them, they travel for a very long distance. And they keep a fish in their basket because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Musa alayhi salam that he's going to have a sign that they are near this, this individual that they need to meet. And that sign is something miraculous is going to happen with this fish. So they put this fish in the basket and they go on this long journey. And after a while, they get tired, they rest near the ocean. Musa alayhi salam falls asleep. While he is asleep, the fish comes alive and jumps into the ocean and swims away. And Yusha witnesses this. But by the time Musa alayhi salam wakes up, Yusha has forgotten about it. And they continue with the journey for another long, long time. Only Allah knows best how long the journey went on. Until Musa alayhi salam, he asked Yusha, let's have our lunch. And then Yusha alayhi salam remembers that about the fish and he tells him. And then Musa tells him, that's the sign we are looking for. So they go back. They go back to the spot where the fish jumped into the ocean. And at that spot, they meet an elderly man. They meet a man who has a mysterious vibe to him. Like, there's something special about him. Now this individual, there is a lot of controversy in our history as to who he really was. Firstly, his name. Some of the historians call him Khidr, some call him Khadir, some call him Al-Khadir. 
generally, it's all of these words have the same translation, the green one. Right? They were, when they say that the miracle was any barren land that he went through, it would be revived and become lush and green again. So that's one point about who he was, his name. The second point, was he a prophet or was he a wali? Again, there is difference of opinion amongst the ulama. Some of the ulama viewed him as a prophet, right? Some of them viewed him as a wali. I am inclined to the opinion that he was a prophet because when you look at the story that's to come, it's clear that he is receiving revelation from Allah. And so this indicates that he was most likely a nabi. A third point of controversy. Was he a prophet sent to a people at that time? Or is he a wali gifted with a long life? And what do we mean by a long life? There are many groups of Muslims today who believe that Khidr is still alive today. And that he will only be killed by the Dajjal. That he will live until that time. Now this is again a point of controversy amongst uh, different schools of Sunni Islam. And again both positions are found amongst Sunni Islam. And it shouldn't be something that we fight over. And so... Again, the position I follow is that he was a prophet of that time and he passed away a long time ago. Uh, Ibn Kasir brings this position forward in his Bidaya on the Haya and he mentions multiple evidences for this. So if anybody wants evidence for that position, uh, you can open up Ibn Kasir's book and read, uh, read what he has to say. He mentions five reasons why Khidr was most likely a prophet and why he most likely passed away. And that's really what I believe to be the strong of you. So let's get back to the story now. So Khidr alayhi salam. He is this mysterious man that Musa alayhi salam and Yusha meet. And so Musa alayhi salam asks him and he says to him, I want to learn from you. Let me accompany you for a while so I can learn from you. And Khidr tells him that you're not going to be able to be patient with me. I'm going to do things that you're not going to understand. And so Musa alayhi salam says, look, I will be patient. Inshallah, I will be patient. Well, just give me a chance. So Khidr makes one condition. He tells Musa alayhi salam, you can join me. You can follow me around for a while on one condition. If you see me doing something strange, don't ask me what I'm doing. Right? Just don't ask questions. So Musa alayhi salam agrees. Now from this point onwards in the story, Yusha isn't mentioned again. Allah knows best whether he accompanies them or whether he waits for them there. We don't know. This, that point is left unclear. But Musa and Khidr, they continue with their journey. And the Quran in Surah al kaf mentions three interesting things that happen in the journey of Musa and Khidr. Number one, they need to cross a river. So a group of people who are not doing very well financially, uh, they, they run like a, a boat to give people lifts across the river. Right? And so they give Musa and Khidr a ride for free. And as they're going across, Khidr takes an axe and he breaks the ship. He makes a hole in the ship. So Musa alayhi salam gets upset and he says, why are you doing this? And then Khidr reminds him, you're not going to be able to be patient with me. I told you. So Musa decides to keep quiet and to just carry on with the journey. When they arrive on the other side, Khidr does something even stranger and something that Musa, rightly, uh, Musa alayhi salam rightfully had you know, uh, to speak up against in that Khidr approached a young boy and killed him. Right? He approached a young boy and he killed him. And so Musa alayhi salam tells him, how can you kill an innocent child? And the Reh Khidr tells him that, I told you, you're not going to be able to be patient with me. And so Musa says, you know, this is, this is tough. It's tougher than I thought. So I'm running out of excuses. One more time I ask a question, it's over. So they go to a town and it's almost nighttime and they need a place to rest. And the people of this town are not hospitable to them at all. Now, historically, before the modern era, there was this culture of hospitality that when you travel to a town, somebody will let you stay in their home, right? And even Islamically, it's actually our duty to let travelers stay in our home for up to three days. This is something we don't know about anymore because nowadays we have hotels and we have, you know, this whole travel culture. But technically, this is part of our Sharia, that we are supposed to be hospitable to people. And so Musa Alayhi he, he arrived at this town and no one is giving him the slightest bit of hospitality. People are extremely mean to them and rude to them. And Khidr alayhi salam, he, he sees a wall that's about to collapse and he fixes it. So Musa alayhi salam suggests, he says, shouldn't you charge some money for that? I mean, they're being mean to us, why are you fix, fixing the walls for free? So Khidr then says that this is it, you've asked too many questions, this is the end of our journey. And so then he explains to him 
He explains to him why he did what he did. And again, this whole everything I mentioned now is in Surah Al Kaf. Go back later, read the translation, and see for yourself. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned the story in Surah Al Kaf. So he mentions his, his reasons for doing these three things. Khidr alayhi salam says that regarding that ship, there was a king going by who is hijacking the ships of people. So I damage their ship, so they'll take it off. They'll be fixing it. The king will go past and still have the ship with it. It's a little bit damaged, but they still have it. Right? As for that boy, Allah informed me. Right? And this is the proof that he was a prophet. He said, Allah informed me that he was growing, he was going to grow up to be a disbeliever and to cause fitna to his parents. So Allah commanded me to take his life and Allah will replace him with a better child. Again, only a Nabi would receive revelation, only a Nabi would be allowed to kill someone like that. Nobody else can say, you know, I'm so pious, I can kill people because Allah told me to do so. It's only a Nabi who, who has been given this level of authority. So that's why this considered the evidence that he was most likely a Nabi. And then he said, as for that town, he said there were some orphans in that town and the treasure was hidden under that wall. So if that wall collapsed, the people of that town, you saw the kind of people that they were, they would have stolen the treasure. So I fix the wall so they don't get the treasure so that when these orphans grow up, they can get the inheritance. It's protected, it's covered. And so this is the story of Musa and Khidr mentioned in Surah al ghaf I want to go through some lessons that we can extract from the story. Lesson number one, bad things happen for good reasons. This is the key point of the story. That only Allah knows why things happen to us. And as Muslims, whenever something goes wrong in life, our first reaction should be Allah knows best. Perhaps there is some khair in this. Perhaps there is some good in this that I don't understand. So, for these people who are going in the ship and the ship breaks, you know, they may be thinking to themselves, my ship broke, how ungrateful those people were. We gave them a ride, they broke our ship. They don't realize they've been saved from their ship being stolen. Again, we can relate to this. Perhaps we get a punctured tire or our car's not starting. Perhaps Allah is saving us from getting hijacked or something like that. Right? Sometimes the, the lesser calamity happens to protect us from a greater calamity. And sometimes we see this in our lives. Sometimes something will happen and in our lives we will see that, oh, that was good for me. You know, there been many, many stories. Somebody misses a flight and the airplane crashes. You know, somebody missed a job interview and they ended up opening up a business. You know, so they, they see it happening in their life that if this didn't happen, that wouldn't have happened. But sometimes we don't. And sometimes we don't know what is the khair behind it. And we will only know in the afterlife. And that's what the second story is about. Those parents who lost their child, for the rest of their life, they're not going to know why their child died. All they're going to know is some stranger killed their child in the woods. And only in the afterlife will they know that the wisdom behind it was that the child doesn't grow up to cause their fitna. And so sometimes things happen in our life that we cannot understand the wisdom behind. In those situations, we still have to just trust Allah's wisdom and know that there must be khair in it if Allah allowed it to happen. The second lesson that we can take from Surah al kaf and from the story of Musa and Khidr is that sometimes the opposite happens as well. That you see something nice happening to an evil person and you wonder why. Like we see the city, they being mean to, to Musa and Khidr and he fixes their wall for free. So from the outside, it looks like they were mean and they got their wall fixed for free. But in reality, that was preventing them from accessing the treasure. So sometimes, a good thing seems to be happening to a bad person, but that good thing is not good for them. Right? So you see someone becoming a billionaire, and that person is not a good person. Being a billionaire may not be good for them. And Allah is testing them to be a billionaire. Right? You see, sometimes the good stuff of this world also are a test, and we forget about that as well. So these are two of the lessons that we can take from Surah al kaf sometimes bad things happen in our life. We must be patient, we must trust Allah's wisdom, and we must understand that everything happens according to the will of Allah and through the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number two, sometimes we see something good happening to an evil person. We must again understand this is from the will of Allah, this is from the wisdom of Allah, and Allah knows best why He's allowing that to happen. Perhaps to prevent something else, or perhaps because some good will come of it, or perhaps just as a test that it is. Allah knows best. We trust Allah's wisdom in everything that happens in our life. Wa akhir da'wana and alhamdulillah rabbil alam.
إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به توكل عليه وقد أما بعد continuing with our lessons from the story of Musa alayhi salam and Khidr another beautiful lesson we learn from the story is the attitude we should have towards knowledge Musa alayhi salam at this point in time is the leader of Bani Israel he is Rasulullah he is the one who spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who received the Torah but still when he hears about someone who knows something he does not know his first reaction is I want to go study with him I want to go learn from him I want to seek knowledge this is the humility of the people of knowledge that we're supposed to be always seeking knowledge we're supposed to be students for life we should never reach a point in our life where we say I know Islam I know everything there is to know but that humility and that eagerness to seek knowledge should always be there a second lesson related to knowledge that we can take from this uh, story is that one of the best ways to learn is to accompany the righteous people. So we see Yusha alayhi salam. How does he learn from Musa alayhi salam? By accompanying him on a journey. Musa alayhi salam, how does he learn from Khidr alayhi salam? By accompanying him on a journey. When you spend time in the company of the righteous, you learn more than from sitting in a class because you learn from their lifestyle, you learn from their character, you learn from their private practices, you learn from their way of practicing Islam. You get a genuine experience of Islam. And even with our da'wah, this is the best way to do da'wah. You want people to see the beauty of Islam, show it to them in your practice. This is the best way to learn, this is the best way to teach. Love Islam and spend time with those who love Islam better than us. And this is one of the ways of seeking knowledge. A final lesson that we can take from the story of Musa and Khidr related to knowledge is that no matter how much we learn, we should never say things like, I know best, or I know better, or I am the most knowledgeable person in this town, or I am the most knowledgeable person in the city. We should never ever make statements like that. Rather, no matter how much we learn, actually whatever we learn should make us more humble. And the more we know, the more we should consider ourselves students. The more we know, the more we should realize that there's so much that we don't know. And this is the beauty of real knowledge. Real knowledge humbles you. You will find that often the people who are arrogant about their knowledge haven't studied Islam in details. But those who have studied Islam for years and decades, they are the ones who are most humble about their knowledge and always willing to learn more and always willing to learn from others. Note that Musa alayhi salam did not ask what is Khidr's qualifications, is he older than me, is he a higher level of prophet than me, is his nation better than my nation. All that matters is he knows something I don't know. I want to learn that from him. And this should always be our attitude towards ill and towards knowledge. So these are some of the lessons we can take from the story of Musa and Khidr. May Allah make us from the people of knowledge, may make us from the people of practice, may make us from the people of ikhlas. Subhanallah, Rabbi Ilahi, Rabbi Alameen, Subhanallah, Rabbi Ilahi, Rabbi Alameen, Rabbi Ilahi, Rabbi Alameen, Rabbi Ilahi, Rabbi Alameen, R